Welcome to Beyond Disruption, where you'll learn how emerging tech is changing the world of accounting, business, and finance. Our guest experts break down the latest news in everything from blockchain to robotics, artificial intelligence to human intelligence. Tune in to find out how you can stay ahead of the curve. Hello, welcome to the Go Beyond Disruption podcast, a weekly series from the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. From our London office, I'm Kyle Hannan. This week's episode is Artificial Intelligence Disrupting Everything. And we'll be talking about AI, digital revolution, automation, new ways of working and rethinking creativity with our expert guest, digital revolutionary Pratish Sharma. Pratish has worked with many different companies at many different levels. Early on in his career, he worked with city councils running technical courses for local communities around the UK. He helped many people rejoin the workforce in a challenging landscape of mass career change in the era of the IT boom. And now Pratish delivers targeted training programs on topics including forecasting, automation, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. And he's a key advisor of disruptive technologies, especially in the emerging scene of the autonomous car. He also engages in ethical hacking and advises organizations on safe practices with their digital footprints. So if we're talking footprints, let's see where his footprint has brought him to us today. Hello, Pratish. Where are you speaking to us from today? Hi, Kyle. I'm speaking from London right now. Thank you very much for joining us. We're not too far away from each other, but of course, uh, our audience being based globally at the moment, at last count, we're being listened to in over 102 different countries. So if uh, you are listening to us in uh, the first stages of your morning commute or in the last stages of your trip home, welcome to the podcast. So Let's figure out what we've left out. Pratish, I, I did say something about what you've been up to. One thing, of course, I didn't mention is that you've worked with the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants in the past to deliver master courses on the innovative uses of data and the creation of business dashboards. So what have we left out? What are you working on that connects with our topic today? Well, all sorts of things are happening in the world of technology at the moment. Um, it's a fast changing environment as it ever has been. Um, but sooner or later, more people from all walks of life will need to take notice of um, what's coming and uh, end up having to change the way we all feel about disruption. So one significant area that I'm looking at right now is uh, blockchain. Uh, blockchain is a distributed digital ledger which uses AI technology and it's set to change the way we do business. Um, it is big. It's potentially a real game changer. Uh, we could potentially do a whole talk just on that alone, to be honest with you. Um, but there is something else that I would like to say. AI technology is new. It's very new and therefore customizable. It should be designed to meet our business and personal needs. Many organizations tend to focus on the cost saving and reducing staff. So that, that's really a, a big item of focus rather than the practicality for their businesses. And so another thing I'm working uh, on at the moment is advising those companies to look at an overall strategy and experience for the customer. If that gets improved and if that gets better, then the costs and certainly the revenues that they'll generate will take care of themselves. And that sounds very much like the kind of automation that works for most people. It seems the perfect time to ask you, Pratish, this key question. And it's a question which comes up time and time again. Can a machine beat a human in everyday tasks, especially in the context of where we are in the accounting and finance profession? What is your take on this? Well, yes, this question does come up um, quite a lot. And, and, and that's a broad question, really, uh, to be honest with you, to narrow this down a little um, to things like cognitive skills, for instance, then yes, the bot can beat the human. Um, a machine has proved to read, digest and create data so much quicker than a human can. It is predicted that AI will have written more texts than humans by 2022. Now, that's quite scary. Um, it's, it's been Halloween recently, and that, that's quite a scary thought. Um, but also, let's look at the Turing test, where a series of human observers play out a keyboard conversation with a machine, and the humans try to identify the machine. That was the core part of the Turing test. That took place in the 1950s. Um, but the machine has never actually won the test, 
up until fairly recently. The technology was able to simulate a 13-year-old Ukrainian boy, and it's things like this that are pushing development, pushing boundaries, and making real progress in answering new questions. So the machines are getting better at human skills all the time, and arguably, machines will surpass human intelligence. All in all, it's probably not a matter of if, it is just a matter of when. Uh, so certainly when it comes to tasks which don't require a lot of thought, imagination, or indeed creativity in the broader sense. Um, but the answer is yes. So the answer is yes, that seems simple enough. But the thing with disruption is it's not new. Things have always been changing. So it seems to make sense to look away from the robots of the future and the process automation that's around the corner and look back to the last few years and looking at the work that you've been doing across the UK, what was one significant disruption that you saw in the profession? How did it transform the organisations that you were working with? Well, let's talk about big data a little bit. It's a bit of terminology that's been flying around for quite some time now. It's the sheer amount of data that has led to stronger and more resilient technologies to handle that amount of data generation. This leads us to the Internet of Things, where everyday devices understand human behaviours. Significant cases where I've seen companies transforming include financial services firms almost now competing with the legal sector. What this means is that financial services has realised potential in rising issues in copyright, data protection, the incoming GDPR, which is very recent, of course, um, and lots of other legal frameworks around that. They've identified these important areas, implemented their ideas and formulated some of that to become part of their core company strategy. And that is really interesting because you mentioned GDPR and we've just seen that tech companies based in California indicate that they will be applying what was a European Union only requirement, this is GDPR, right across the board in their wider global company strategy. So the fact is that what's being done legally, what's being focused on in one part of the world to ensure data protection is no longer something which is restricted to one part of the world. It becomes global. And that's just one of the solutions that are already out there. So what can an organization buy into right now that will help them do that better? Okay, well, AI is now already all around us. Uh, and much of it is free, like apps on our phones. Uh, but yes, there are premium products that we can buy which can help with more corporate tasks. Um, IBM is a major player and their software that they've introduced is IBM Watson Analytics. This works great for financial services firms, um, as well as in healthcare. Just go to IBM.com to read up on their latest programs. There's a whole host of things that uh, they're offering. The software includes predictive analytics, and this is part of the core kind of AI software, and can identify further insights into customer data, as well as loads of other features. Uh, there is a free version though, so if anyone's listening and thinking, okay, let's try that without sort of committing, um, it, without any commitment, they can get a free version available on that. So they can try that for 30 days, see how they get on. And if they're interested in buying further, there are other premium versions available. Um, but there is another area, and that's chatbots. Motion.ai is a great provider for this. It's a major provider of these kind of bots. And that can interact with customers just like a human. It's available 24 seven. This is one of the unique selling points. It's always there. They've been bought by HubSpot recently. So if you go to hub, hubspot.com, you can find out loads more. Another one I can think of is accounting bots. We've seen a recent influx of startups in this area. A good example of a startup is SMACC. Again, S-M-A-C-C. -C. If you just Google them, um, you can see that they offer full accounting services via a bot. So it's totally automated. There's no human intervention in the process. They've won a lot of investment recently. In fact, it's totaling up to three and a half million dollars. Certainly lots of interest in this startup. So the list of AI solutions that are constantly um, available is constantly also growing. 
and change is constantly with us. Now, if you're running to try and keep up with those links that Pratish has just given us, um, he mentioned motion.ai, he mentioned um, SMACC, uh, we'll have links to all of this in our show notes. So if you're using iTunes, Google Podcasts, wherever you're getting your podcast right now, however you're listening to this, if you just click on the information icon, all those show notes will come up and you'll see those links. So let's talk about the world of machine learning. Where is AI making significant progress? And before I go into the answer, let me just say that AI is something that people are talking about a lot, but to most people, they think it means artificial intelligence. Whereas understanding AI as standing for assisted information, that's something that people have to understand. AI can be more than just one thing, can't it? Well, that's true. Um, we're living at a time where we are able to witness exciting developments, lots of developments from the ground up. Um, so yes, there are lots of examples where real positive impact is being made already. The first thing that comes to my mind is healthcare. Diagnosing diseases, for example. Uh, also monitoring heart conditions, doing blood tests. In fact, one of Google's arms called DeepMind, um, this was a UK company, by the way, uh, before Google bought this out uh, about four years ago. They have managed to make use of billions and billions of data points. Again, we're going to that big data kind of scenario. Lots of data points, including MRI scans, past patient data. Um, by the way, that past patient data was pseudonymized, um, just in case GDPR has any ears here. Um, but yes, and have now been able to diagnose patients with Alzheimer's as much as 10 years in advance of them having any symptoms. Now, that's absolutely amazing. Drug development, um, opportunities for new treatments. Well, the list kind of goes on here. But when it comes to the financial services sector, there are companies that are using the technology to fight financial fraud. Um, so again, cybersecurity is one of my um, areas that I deal with. And fighting financial fraud, AI is really successful uh, by assessing risk factors that are difficult for humans to recognize on their own. One company decided to tackle issues surrounding insurance verification and understanding what services are covered by teaching an AI program to read insurance cards and identify key coverage details. I ought to mention law while I'm on this topic here. Now, law isn't a core part of our conversation here, but this is a big area of disruption as well. So it deserves a quick mention. All sorts of things are happening in the legal sector. In fact, there is a new bit of terminology flying around, law tech, L-A-W-T-E-C-H. It's a new buzzword these days. Do you know, I think I'm going to have to add a hashtag to the show description. So law tech, tell us more about what exactly that means. OK, so there is actually shockingly no proper legal framework around the ownership of AI. Um, so there's an opportunity for law firms immediately. Um, they can advise their clients of best practice and new policies, etc. I would say financial services firms can also get in on this and advise their clients of legal issues. So law tech comes under. It's kind of like an umbrella term now for all of this. All of this is new. So straight away, it's an opportunity for tech startups as well. Um, like I was saying earlier, the proverbial gap between financial services and legal firms is getting narrower. While we're on law, we're seeing an increase in robot lawyers. They can read tons of text really quickly and feed that back to a human. So this, is, this can save tons of time for a human lawyer. Where something could take days, this can now be done in minutes. A competition was held not too long ago, actually, which involved 100 human lawyers and a robot called Case Cruncher Alpha. The same data was given to both parties and they needed to see if a PPI claim would be allowed. The robot won hands down. Um, via 800 predictions, the robot achieved nearly 87% accuracy versus humans at only 66%. There's another good story about um, the area of law tech as well. A 19 year old programmer of British soil. So he's actually from the UK. He launched an AI lawyer via an app on smartphones. It helps people appeal their parking ticket. So out of a quarter of a million appeals, it has so far had a 64 percent success rate. So actually, yes, plenty of success stories. 
We're talking about law tech. We've mentioned uh, the opportunities uh, for firms that may be ahead. And to keep ahead of the game, obviously, you can spend so much time talking about technology and automation that you kind of forget about keeping the human in the loop. And it's the human that brings perspective, the human that brings ethics. Or do they? Sure, that doesn't apply to everyone. But any time you talk about decision making, there's also talk about ethics, isn't there? So people will ask how a machine would make certain decisions. Is that decision making process the same as a human or are there big differences? Oh, currently, um, ethics is a big issue. It's a huge, huge issue. There, there are lots of debates around this, um, but also bias as well in decision making, uh, particularly in autonomous vehicles. Um, there is something called the liability debate, for instance. Who is to blame when an autonomous car with no active human driver is involved in an accident? So either with another vehicle or with someone else or something else. Insurance firms are scrapping their policies and starting again, in fact. There needs to be a new framework that caters for all eventualities. Now, going back to the fact that the technology is new and it is going to make mistakes, it's always going to make mistakes and, and have teething problems. But it is the programming that drives the decision making. Loads of research is going into how the human brain works and how we, as humans, make decisions. The, gate, the data gathered from the uh, research is going into the cars. So many of us may have heard of the trolley problem, where the runaway train decides who to kill out of a series of unfavorable options. Research firms have brought this question out to the public. So it's kind of like, let's get the whole world to decide what to do. You're right. I've heard of the trolley problem. I'm familiar with what it is. But for those who may not have heard of the trolley problem, can you give just a quick overview of what that is? Uh, yes, the trolley problem is, is a strange kind of terminology given to this uh, particular scenario. But it is kind of like a scenario where there is a runaway train. The train is out of control. It's gaining speed and there is no way to actually stop the train. And this is a train which is governed by AI. It's not run by a human. It is essentially a, an autonomous train. Is That's that the, the proposition, yes. So the, the train is run by AI software and, the, and it's out of control. So there's no way of kind of like um, stopping that train manually or by other kind of like reasonable means. Um, so there are options um, to take for that AI software built into the train. Whichever option it takes, it's going to inevitably, unfortunately, kill human beings. Um, so it's the decision making process that the trolley problem talks about is that if it takes one route, it will, it will take a particular route and kill a number of pedestrians. If it takes another route, so it changes track and, and goes to another route, it will then kill a couple of engineers on the track. If it takes another route, it will then eventually get to a point where it will kill a mass number of people because it could be in a built up area. So there is no good outcome. No. And the issue really is how would AI handle that? And I suppose some, sometimes you just got to ask yourself the same question. Well, how would a human handle it? And that would, I suppose, give us the insight really that, that you're, you're talking about trying to gain. That's right. You? So um, by asking the whole world, so to speak, so sampling data from various countries, etc., to decide what to do, allowed us to gain lots of insight into what people think and what, how people believe um, this should be dealt with in autonomous cars. So people from around the world have been surveyed and they were posed with riddles like, who would they rather kill? <laughs> I, I should say, or rather, who would they preserve? Um, where the vehicle could not stop in time. So many countries opted to save humans over animals. Now, I guess many of us would expect that to happen, um, as well as, of course, children over adults. Again, that's an obvious answer. Um, and in many cases, younger people over the elderly. Except, however, for countries like China, where respect for the elderly is very, very important. Uh, the majority vote also went to saving women over men except for Latin America. This is an ongoing debate though at this stage and it isn't very clear as to how this is going to affect and impact the oncoming set of autonomous cars, but this does indeed give us a bit of insight at this stage.
Absolutely fascinating. So anytime people think, of, well, the answer in any particular situation is to ask what a human would do, and then any uh, example of successful AI or successfully programmed autonomous vehicle would simply do what a human would do, uh, you're saying there is no such thing because humans in different parts of the world from different cultures or in different contexts would all do different things. So perhaps we should measure our expectations. I'm going to be coming back to you in, in a minute, talking a little bit more about your role as a digital revolutionary in rethinking creativity, because that was something we, we mentioned at the beginning. But first, I just want to remind our listeners that they are listening to the Beyond Disruption podcast. Are you ready for disruption? Join us in Chicago, Illinois, April 24th through 26th at the AICPA CFO Conference to find out. The CFO Conference keeps you at the cutting edge of the financial industry with 22 sessions developed for CFOs, by CFOs, 33 subject matter experts, and two professional networking sessions. It's the one event of the year specifically designed to prepare you for disruption and provide you with the opportunities to advance your career and make your mark in the C-suite world. Get $75 off when you register before March 12th and use promo code CFO19 for an extra 75 off for a total savings of $150. But don't worry, if you're hearing this podcast after March 12th, you can still use promo code CFO19. And if you can't attend the CFO conference in person, you can still join us online so you don't miss out with all of our exclusive sessions streamed live in real time straight to your computer or mobile device. You'll also have access to remote networking, chat rooms, handouts, and slides, just as if you were there with us on site. Register today at AICPAstore.com slash CFO, and we'll look forward to seeing you at the 2019 CFO Conference. Every expert we speak to will bring unique and valuable insights into that area where human intelligence meets technology, which brings us right back to our guest, Pratish Sharma. Pratish, you mentioned creativity as potentially one area where machines won't, probably won't, surpass human intelligence anytime soon. So is this creativity, conventional creativity, the things we understand as, as what creativity means, uh, designing, art and crafts, music, uh, things like that? Um, actually, you've just hit on a real hot topic there. Um, up until recently, the general consensus was that all creativity was considered safe uh, from automation. But now we are seeing evidence that even creativity might get caught by AI. Um, one example is art, a painting, a portrait actually, which has been generated entirely by a machine. Um, to be honest with you, it might not be very good at the first attempt, but it is only a first attempt. Um, this is a sign for things to come, and the painting itself has been sold for a good sum of money. It has fetched a whopping $430,000, a masterpiece in its own right. Um, another example of creativity is Microsoft's new drawing bot. It can create an image just by reading a bunch of text. It understands the description of the object, creates something much like a photograph, it can also regenerate a face of a human by looking at existing photos or by looking at another human. Uh, here's another. In music, AI has created its own tune and it's on YouTube. It is predicted that AI will have its own top 10 album by 2025. That's not far away. That's not far away at all. Time is flying. Um, so going back to an important question, would having creative skills safeguard a human from being replaced? Well, the answer to that question is low, no longer clear. Uh, you know, it's amazing to think that every education system around the world puts creativity at the bottom of the curriculum. Everyone talks about maths, science, etc., but art, music, and so on is always given less priority. We keep telling the future generation, you're not going to be a musician, you're not going to be an artist. It's statements like that which are teaching children of today, the workforce of the future, not to be creative. Well, uh, the education system was created to suit industrialism. Organisations around the world scrutinise and punish mistakes, and so do schools. What we should be teaching children is to be prepared to make mistakes in order to progress. 
I'm, I'm going to quote a great speaker on the subject of education, Ken Robinson. I'm a big fan of his work. He has said, we are not educated into creativity, we are educated out of it. A lot of this depends on how we view creativity, how we understand creativity. I could go on, uh, but back to the question. Is the future safe for anyone who is creative? Again, the answer is no longer clear. We may see machines being more creative than a human. So watch that space. It's interesting what you said there. Be prepared to make mistakes in order to make progress. So let's talk about where that progress may take us. Let's get ahead of the curve. What's one big change that you think lies ahead? And how do you recommend we get ready for it, either in our, in our personal lives or in our business careers? Okay, well, history tells us that in many cases, we have resisted change. It has led to people being displaced. Let's embrace AI. We need to take a positive approach to this change. And this includes encouraging the creators of AI solutions to make the right decisions for it to help humans and not necessarily the other way around. Or rather, in a business context, AI should serve as a business plan or sh should serve a business plan, not the other way around. A lot of the younger generation is growing up with automation and personalized services all around them. They have come to expect this kind of service. So organizations need to be prepared to start offering that kind of service. To build a successful strategy for any organization, we can start by asking ourselves some real questions. Do we want to improve internal processes like accounts? Are we looking to improve customer experience? Are there features in the product that would benefit with AI? Or do we need some insights into product design? Also, are there specific tasks that are repetitive, error prone, or tasks where a little help can make employees more efficient? Other points to consider, companies that view intelligent machines merely as a cost cutting tool are likely to push them into all the wrong places. AI does away with the repetitive, dull parts of the job, but this doesn't always mean you'll require less staff. Adopting AI isn't necessarily an easy process. AI products are data products. Training your AI product requires data, a lot of data. To flourish with AI, you need to be proficient at acquiring data strategically. So let me stop you there, Pratik. So you said to flourish and to use AI, you as a company need to be proficient in the strategic acquisition of data. How do we do that? There are three parts to an AI approach, broadly three parts generating data, interpreting that data, and making judgment about that data. Keeping this in mind, an AI team requires at least the three separate roles that I'm going to mention here. A data engineer to organize this information, a data scientist who investigates this information, a software engineer who implements the applications. Uh, most companies with AI aspirations do not have the right data practices, even though they believe they do. So all in all, take a close and skeptical look at how you presently use data as part of creating your AI strategy. You've told us that there's tremendous growth in AI by which many people would think that could be artificial intelligence, could also stand for assisted information. Uh, machine learning, all of those are moving us at quite a fast pace towards new horizons in new ways. Um, you know, so far, so conventional. We know this is happening, but what about the stuff we may have missed? There must be something perhaps below the radar, some obscurities or some strange stories about how um, the machines haven't done what we expected? Uh, yes, machines can behave in very unexpected ways. And uh, there are so many stories I could tell you. Uh, we could be talking for a very long time. Um, but some of the stories are fascinating, though. Um, and we have to always remember that the technology is new and it's bound to make mistakes and behave in ways which we don't expect. A couple of well-publicized cases come to mind. Three, in fact. Uh, one was where Amazon Alexa had started laughing at her owners, just kind of randomly, yet no laughs had been programmed into the mechanics. Another was with Facebook. Two bots had been put in place to monitor unsavory posts. 
but then the bots had begun communicating with each other in a strange language of their own. So they got closed down straight away. The other case was where, unfortunately, a human had been struck down by an autonomous car as it mistook the human for another object. The car should have stopped before striking the person, regardless of what the car thought the object was, but it didn't, due to a bug in the software. Now, all of these cases, particularly the last one, reinforces the need to get it right. We probably can't get anything right the first time, but as we become reliant on these things as time goes on, like with many other technologies, it becomes crucial. But yes, I'm sure that the stories and obscurities will keep on coming thick and fast. And I think I know someone who can tell us when they do. Now, for anyone who'd like to find out more about those stories or perhaps about the more conventional side of this topic uh, in, in general, uh, perhaps about your work in particular, where would you recommend they look, British? Well, I post a series of information on social media channels. Uh, one of the biggest is Twitter. Uh, people are welcome to uh, follow me on there. Uh, to follow me, it's just my name, all one word. Uh, there are updates all the time. So that's Pratish Sharma, P-R-A-T-I-S-H. Yes, correct. All right. And we'll put notes, of course, to that in the show notes. If they really want to sink their teeth into the topic itself and go really deep, where would you recommend they should look? Well, there's also um, a great book out on the topic of how leadership will evolve in the future. It is called The Future of Leadership, written by Bridget Hyacinth. And it's been out for a few months and it is thoroughly recommended. In addition to all of that, though, the BBC also has a special dedicated section on artificial intelligence and robotics. Uh, easy to get to via the homepage. So I would check that out also. Excellent. And you mentioned Bridget Hyacinth. Um, let me just say that we expect to have her on this podcast in the not too distant future. Let's wrap up with one message that you'd like to leave for people in the accounting and finance profession that would help them go beyond the disruption that's coming. Stay informed on current issues like uh, data, the Internet of Things, blockchain, etc. Uh, we need to start understanding this new world of emerging technologies and the potential issues surrounding them. Uh, that new world includes data quality, data analytics, business intelligence and also data governance. An easy way to stay on top is to continue asking ourselves some key questions. Who owns it? How do you get it? How good is it? Where is it kept? How secure is it? How do we analyze it? How can we take that analysis and turn it into intelligence that provides us with better business decisions? Well, with all this said, just a final thought here. Let's not start panicking about any apocalypse anytime soon. We're not necessarily expecting some kind of Terminator style war, one would hope. Um, but it's all about the right decisions being made now that will help shape our future. Although new technologies have made certain jobs disappear, humans have historically found ways to bring new ones in. The rise of automobiles may have put stables out of business, but it created a need for new roads, auto repair shops, gas stations, greater trade, and opportunities for redesigning and improving them. Going into the future, being surrounded by AI may lead us to crave human interaction more than ever before. Well, this has certainly been a tremendously interesting interaction with our guest, Pratish Sharma. Thank you so much, Pratish. There's certainly lots more to explore around the topic today. We've been talking about AI, digital revolution, automation, new ways of working, rethinking creativity, and the digital revolutionary that is Pratish Sharma has been filling us in all about the topic, which uh, this week was artificial intelligence disrupting everything. So uh, I wish we had more time, but we don't. So we can remind people to go and have a look at our show notes. That's where they'll find all the information they need to find out more about our guest, Pratish Sharma, as well as about the topics that he mentioned, as well as the resources too, all in the show notes. And there are two other websites we'd recommend for anyone interested in taking this further. Most of our members will already be using one or the other of these sites, depending on where they are in the world. So uh, for example, you may have already had them in your bookmarks 
if you use the AICPAstore.com or the CGMAstore.com, just add the words go beyond disruption and you should get straight there. So AICPAstore.com slash go beyond disruption or CGMAstore.com slash go beyond disruption. That's where you'll find courses, webinars, and more professional development resources, which are consistently being updated to keep members ahead of the curve. So talking of updates, you can get our latest insights every week, new episodes on your mobile, on your uh, tablet or your computer. And to get those new episodes free and automatically, just tap the subscribe or follow past Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, or wherever you already get your podcasts. We hope that you got something useful from this episode too. Feel free to share it with a friend, a colleague, or with anyone in your network who'd enjoy it. I'm Kyle Hannan, and we'll be back soon with more insights that help you and your profession to go beyond disruption. Until next time, goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beyond Disruption, brought to you by the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. Learn more about today's topic at AICPA-CIMA.com forward slash disruption. This podcast is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the AICPA or AICPA.org. It is provided with the understanding that the AICPA and AICPA.org are not engaged in offering legal, accounting, or other professional service. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The AICPA and AICPA.org make no representations, warranties, or guarantees as to, and assume no responsibility for, the content or application of the material contained herein and especially disclaim all liability for any damages arising out of the use of, reference to, or reliance on such material.